What's up, Ruckers? I'm Steven Weiss. I'm the opinions editor here at the Daily Targum, and this is After the Edit. Today we're going to be discussing a situation that's unfolded over the past couple of weeks after a student started a petition calling for the cancellation of a university-sponsored speech by Lisa Dafkari, a journalist and Rutgers graduate who some consider to be an Islamophobe. The petition got over 1,500 signatures, and the university subsequently decided to indefinitely postpone the speech, but at this point it's become clear that Lisa Dafkari won't be speaking at Rutgers. I'm going to allow my guests to introduce themselves before we dive into that conversation. Hi, my name is Andrea Vasciano. I'm a senior here at Rutgers and a former columnist for the Daily Targum. And I began a counter petition in support of Lisa Deftari, and I also wrote an opinions article in support of her. Hi, guys. My name is Nina Khan, and I'm a sophomore here at Rutgers University. I'm part of the organization MPRC, um, which is an organization called Muslims Public Relations Council and we're an overarching umbrella organization from Muslim organizations on campus and we were in support of the petition and we also wrote an op-ed for the Targum um, about the petition and we also submitted a RUSA um, resolution for canceling the speaker. Can I just start off by asking you guys to describe your relative stances on the petition and your reasoning behind your stance? So, I was very strongly opposed to the original petition because I found that the petition had misquoted Deftari and miscategorized her as an Islamophobe. They took um, as the core of the petition a speech that she gave at the Heritage Foundation, but they really misquoted her. They misquoted what she said about ISIS recruitment and what ISIS bases itself on. They claimed that she said that ISIS based its teachings off of the Quran when she actually said they claim to base their teachings off of the um, Quran. So um, I found that the petition was false. It falsely claimed that they were using student money to fund her. And with that, that is why I began strongly opposing the original petition and supporting Dabtari vocally. Uh, so I was in support of the first petition that was released um, because I do strongly believe that she is Islamophobic. Um, the examples that were written on the petition were just a few of the ones that she has stated. Um, there are multiple ones where she talks about how she herself actually came to uh, campus and went to different Muslim organization events and claimed that the speakers were inciting jihad. Um, and that's something that threatens the safety of Muslims on campus, and that's exactly why the petition was started in the first place. Um, our biggest um, reasoning to cancel the speaker was because our tuition and our fees were being used to bring the speaker in. And this was confirmed by Ben Sifuentes, who is the undergraduate academic affairs vice chancellor here at Rutgers University. And the president of NPRC and other leaders from Muslim organizations uh, actually went to this meeting. And um, he said that he deeply regrets uh, bringing her to campus as he did was not aware of uh, how Islamophobic she actually was. Um, and another point to add, she actually doesn't believe that Islamophobia is a real thing, which is actually quite concerning to us Muslims. Um, because that actually creates a lot of implications of Muslims on campus and almost um, invalidates uh, what Muslims feel every day on a campus and the hate speech and the different uh, <laughs> the different violent actions that are taken on Muslims every semester, every day, unfortunately, here at Rutgers campus. So that's exactly why we started the petition, and that's why I strongly support the cancellation of her event. Could I respond to that? Sure. So it appears to me, I, I mean, the undergraduate academic affairs um, office released in a statement that the lecture would have been paid for by a private fund. So if the vice chancellor has told you something different, then, like, I don't know. That's, it's kind of bizarre to me that Rutgers hasn't been clear on this because they said very clearly that it was being paid for by a private speaking fund um, and not tuition money. But I won't, if you, if you claim that he said that to you, then I guess that's just vague right now. Um, in regards to what she said about Islamophobia, first off, I'm aware that Islamophobia at Rutgers does exist, and I think it's very unfortunate. Um, in the article for the Daily Targum, 
you described how, or I don't know if you wrote the article, but the Muslim Public Relations Council described how hijabs are snatched off of women, how they're yelled um, very rude things about being like ISIS bombers or whatever. Um, I, th I think that's very unfortunate, but I do not think that Lisa Deptari is an Islamophobe. I, I know which tweet you were referring to when she basically retweeted someone who said that Islamophobia didn't exist. That is a very complicated discussion because I don't think anyone would deny that Muslim people are mistreated every day. But I do know that there are people such as Christopher Hitchens who said that, yeah, Christopher Hitchens, what did he say? He said, Islamophobia is a word created by fascists and used by cowards to um, manipulate morons. And he was a very vocal atheist and very vocal critic of all, of all religions, but particularly Islam. Um, and I, I think that, I don't know, first off, I don't agree with the tweet, yeah. but I don't know what she was referring to in it. I don't know if it was referring to a criticism of the religion itself or a criticism of the people who were making the claims that they were discriminated against. So yeah, sorry, that might, I may have been talking in tangents, but from the sentiment that I've observed online, they don't deny that Muslims are mistreated, but they have issue with the fact that they are called Islamophobic for criticizing Islam, which is a different discussion. So this is all of an extremely complicated discussion. Um, and I also think it's part of the reason why she, the, her invitation should not have been rescinded and why she should have spoke because we could have had the opportunity to ask her about that. What did she mean when she had retweeted that and um, basically confirmed that she thought that the word Islamophobia was being misused? Like, what does that tweet mean? It's so hard to say because you can't encap, all she said was pretty much to a tweet. This situation is particularly interesting because it sheds light on what I see as a very complex line separating two of Rutgers' fundamental values. On the one hand, you have inclusiveness and acceptance and the protection of students in the Rutgers community against hate and prejudice. And on the other hand, you have academic freedom and intellectual diversity. And it seems like those two values are kind of stepping on each other's toes here. And so what I'm wondering is um, how far can we push intellectual diversity um, and like like how do you truly deem an idea irrelevant or dangerous and like how far can we go with that? Right, so I think um, there needs to be a line drawn when it becomes a safety threat and that's what we believe happened in this case. Um, it became a safety threat because, as mentioned before, there are already so many Islamophobic comments said every day. There's violent actions that take place every day um, towards Muslims. So when that line gets crossed where it becomes a safety threat to students on campus that should not be happening, I think that's where the line should be drawn. And that's exactly why this petition was created. Um, um, I'm sympathetic to concern for student safety. I do not think that Lisa Deftari would have been a threat to student safety. Um, I think that this is a very tricky subject. In terms of determining which ideas are dangerous or not, I think it's important to consider if the ideas are mainstream, and Lisa Deftari is mainstream, and it's also important to look at what they've said and to look at that in context and to handle that information responsibly. I do not think that the petition did that. The petition very clearly misquoted her, very clearly. The petition scared many students and I think that if everyone who had signed the first petition had seen the heritage speech, they would realize that what she was saying was not Islamophobic. Um, and in general, when it comes to controversial speakers, I don't think that if a speaker threatens the safety of a student that the college should have an obligation to like fund said speaker. I think that in that case, no. Like For example, I don't think that Richard Spencer should speak at Rutgers, um, but I'd be fine if the university had funded more right-leaning speakers, but not Richard Spencer, because he would obviously be a threat, and his ideas honestly don't have much value. 
Um, uh, I think that it has to be a matter of respecting yeah. students' concerns, but also prioritizing the truth. And I think that we can have both cultural diversity and intellectual diversity. And I think that we should always keep in mind that when views are silenced, people get very mad and it can galvanize people with the wrong views. So for example, if someone were Islamophobic and saw Lisa Daftari was going to speak and saw that a lot of students were protesting her, calling her hateful and you know unreasonable, and this Islamophobe didn't see anything wrong with Lisa Daftari, then that Islamophobe being you know, a racist and biased person would think, hmm, what are the Muslim students hiding? And I think that when you silence views that you disagree with, you ultimately, and it's very unfortunate because no one wants there to be more racist in society or more hateful people in society, but you can sometimes like galvanize them into opposing you even more. And it's, I think it's very unfortunate and I hope it doesn't happen at Rutgers, but I, we, we saw in like 2016 when colleges were silencing conservatives on campus that ultimately the counter protest became more and more extreme. So that's my take. I think that we should value the safety of students, but we should also take it very, very seriously if, you know, if the accusations being leveled are accurate. This isn't about silencing the speaker, in my opinion. This is about really just what you said, looking at safety of students on campus. Um, actually, at, in the uh, Heritage, um, Women's of Heritage um, speech, or the, the way... Conservative Women's Network. Yeah, where she went to speak. Um, at the end, she actually said, report it when you see it. And she said that their minds being watched on campus. And she gave the example of a pro-Israel and a free Palestine group that she saw um, when she went to California to visit a university. And she said that uh, these uninformed minds get tainted by these free Palestine groups. Um, but she talks about Islam, um, and uh, to be completely honest, she's quite uninformed about it. And I actually think that's pretty uh, hypocritical, um, because she miseducates people about Islam, and she goes around and um, talks about it anyway. And she herself said, um, that when you can inform people and whether it's to bring awareness that's going on campus etc so we're basically just saying we're, we're basically taking what she said at the end of her video and we were implement, implementing that ourselves um, so she actually mentioned that herself and I felt like it was quite funny um, to mention that in this video as well because that's exactly what we did uh, we found her words and her tweets um, and her response to the petition and the pretty much uh, retweet of the Islamophobic uh, definition. Um, and we just took that and we informed people on campus about what uh, she actually talks about and what she has said in the past. And uh, we made that petition. All right, guys, this has been After the Edit. Thanks for watching. If you guys agreed or disagreed or had any thoughts about anything that was said in this video, please show us in the comments. And if you have a strong opinion about any editorials in the future, feel free to send us your views to op-ed at dailytargeting.com.